fact of the matter is, Chris, there's going to come a time, and it's not that far down the road. You see, I've got more age in years. I've got more age in the business, in this great sport. And age denotes wisdom. There's going to come a time in my life and in your life when there's no more cameras, no more TV lights, no more people running up to you at the mall saying, can I have your autograph? And whether you walk away from this great sport or whether you limp away or whether they roll you away in a wheelchair, the one constant will always be in your life is your family. They're there. They pat you up when you're hurt. They prop you up. They build your ego up and they send you back out that door. Well, Chris, I'm just going to ask you one time. Is this obsession with destroying every aspect of Kevin Sullivan's life worth losing your soul? Well, is it? Injuries, external and internal. A ligature furrow completely surrounds the neck. It ranges from one quarter to one half inch wide. At the front of the neck, it goes horizontally and measures one half inch in width. At the left and right sides of the neck, it elevates towards the posterior ears and upper mid back. Posteriorly, it is one quarter inch wide. The skin within the furrow is most prominently dry, leathery, and tan. There are three one quarter inch in diameter dried abrasions on the anterior neck. Hmm, how do you get those abrasions if he had a towel taped around his neck? He weighs 215 pounds, he did, all right? The pulleys were on 240. You follow me? Yep. It, 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 he didn't die. If you've ever been hung, everybody try to hang you. I <laughs> have tried, believe it or not. And, but it's not something funny to talk about. But uh, he suffered. He hung a good 10, 15 minutes. All right. If you're going to kill yourself, you ain't going to make yourself suffer, are you? Think about that. Anyway, around the neck is a tight, single looped, 70 inch long, 5 16 inch in diameter black rope ligature, which is slipped through a white metal carabiner. Adjacent to the carabiner is a black ball attached to the rope. The carabiner and the ball are at the lateral aspect of the right side of the neck. Underneath the black rope ligature is a three and a half inch wide, 24 inch long white towel, which is wrapped around the neck twice and taped to itself. Okay. There are few scattered petechial hemorrhages of the palpebral and orbital conjunctivae of both eyes. Internally, there are no fractures of the hyoid bone or thyroid cartilage or hemorrhage in the soft tissues of the anterior or posterior neck. The soft tissues beneath the ligature furrow are dry. The towel and rope are submitted as evidence. So Chris Benoit didn't have any broken bones in his neck. It says there's no fractures of the hyoid bone or thyroid cartilage. There's no hemorrhage in the soft tissues of the anterior or posterior of the neck, which I think is interesting because, oh, uh, see, I don't want to go into, into theories, but man, if you look at Jeffrey Epstein's autopsy, he had broken bones in his neck and he supposedly hanged himself from his bunk bed with a paper sheet.
through cooperation from the Benoit family, we have had the opportunity to examine the brain tissue obtained from the autopsy of Christopher Benoit. You see these, these brain cells here. In September, the Institute held a news conference in New York to release its findings. Chris Benoit, the researchers announced, had the brain of an elderly Alzheimer's patient. The findings themselves stated that Chris Benoit had the brain of an 85-year-old man with dementia. And I would suggest to you that if from a layman's standpoint, Chris Benoit could not do what he did for a living. He could not function as a normal human being. He couldn't even go to the airport if, in fact, that report were accurate. I know that the, in the search engine on the computer that he had researched um, the quickest and easiest way to break an egg. Really? Yeah. And the story was that he basically put the, was it the pull-down rack around his neck and just let go of the pull-down handle on a, on a weight stack mm -hmm. and just let go? With a towel, yeah. He had a towel around, his, around, around the... And even that, like... The, the, it's not out. It's, it's the strength to do that because I'm, I'm assuming oh, yeah. to be able to break your neck, you'd need a whole stack of plates mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to pull it down in that position. Like you're dealing with otherworldly, you know, superhuman strength. superhuman strength going on here. Mm -hmm. That's what the police said. Wow. Like there wouldn't have been if he hadn't been who he was. Uh huh. They, it would not have killed. You know, it yeah, would never yeah, have worked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, right. No one else could have pulled that. And, and, and what a way to to do it. Like. It's so tied into him, like he was obsessed with lifting weights, and that's what basically he killed himself by. Part 3 we see once again in a steroid using individual cardiomegaly and enlarged heart dilation 620 grams. Remember a man's heart should not be more than 450 grams. In keeping with heart failure other enlarged organs are noted here hepatomegaly, enlarged liver and splenomegaly, enlarged spleen. is an analysis of the brain. There is no epidural, subdural or subarachnoid hemorrhage. The brain weighs 1540 grams and has a normal distribution of unremarkable cranial nerves and cerebral vessels. So I think we can safely rule out CTE or any other kind of brain injury or abnormality. And I know that, you know, everyone talks about the a concussion issue with Christopher and I am certain that that maybe played a role as well. You know, I don't really wholeheartedly take uh, the, the the institute's findings on on his on his brain yeah. at a hundred percent value either. But mm -hmm. um, if it was maybe at MIT or Harvard or not some school in West Virginia or some right, you know, right, right. house paid school in West Virginia, different yeah. story. But still, the autopsy never said you know he has Alzheimer's. He couldn't find his way to you know he, he couldn't find his way out of a paper bag. He couldn't remember people. That wasn't Chris. Mm -hmm. uh, you know the things that they're saying that were linked to concussions. That wasn't Chris. It wasn't ever what I observed ever. They say that he killed wife and his son with his finishing hole in pro wrestling. If you was going to kill somebody, you wouldn't put no freaking hold on them, okay? You know what I mean? You know, you follow me? That's the way more or less it was said and done. That's a work. That's a bunch of bullshit. I never say no cop that was on there had come on that. The NBC emailed me, Ann Scranton is her name, the day after that happened. 
they check everybody's background and see. And I'd worked a little in law before, and I was only asking people I didn't know, and every one of them said set up. Everybody I talked to said it was a set up. Said Ray Charles and Stevie Wonder can see that. He didn't have no alcohol in his system. There's a wine bottle right by that uh, pulleys where he hung himself. You know what I mean? Or said he hung himself. Oh. Uh, he had no alcohol in it. There's beer cans in there. There's alcohol in Nancy. With the, the facts of what I know from being there immediately after that weekend and seeing everything, it wasn't the act of someone, you know, with brain damage. It, it wasn't. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. It's impossible for that to have been the case. It happened over the course of a few days, though. It did. Is that, it, it I mean, was, that's the, the story, at least. Yeah, that's, it is exactly what happened. They, they um, my sister was killed Friday evening um, between 11 and 1 a.m., and then uh, Saturday morning, uh, Daniel was killed, and then Chris killed himself Sunday evening. So he spent two full days in the house with Nancy and Daniel not alive which is just again super out of character not just out of character no. but that's he, let's be honest yeah. gonna, that's weird you can kill your wife summertime we'll cut the air conditioner off it was 92 degrees when they found the bodies you know why you know why because this is true you can't get a, a proper autopsy on the brain at 90 degrees over because the brain goes to mush You know, they don't know what the hell's going on in that house, and they mm -hmm. don't know anything about it. Even the district attorney, um, Scott Ballard, he had to retract a statement that, I mean, we completely, I lost my mind about, I really lost my mind about when they said that my nephew was sick. I and had, like, fragile X syndrome or something yeah, those lines, yeah. I completely lost my mind. I went to his pediatrician's office. I got his medical records, and I... I mean, and I made him, I was like, you're going to have to go publicly on television and apologize. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. They said there were track marks on my nephew's arm, which is preposterous. It was nothing of the sort, not in the Emmy report, not ever. At approximately 1145 hours, 1145 a.m., we began to view the body of Chris Benoit. The blood that was noted on his nose at the scene, oh shit, here we go, okay, had been removed by the moisture of the body or rubbed off in the bag. Now, if you watched my previous videos, specifically part five with the search warrant, we saw that at the crime scene, they saw the blood on Benoit's nose and on a finger, but they didn't take a sample of the blood because it was their experience to transport the body as is to the crime lab. But by the time the body got to the crime lab, the blood was gone. Same because I remember that day like it was yesterday. I'm sitting in my house right now and uh, I was taking a nap. My son, uh, uh, who's now 22 years old, woke me up and said, Chris and Nancy and Daniel are dead. And, uh, you know, you first wake up, you're kind of groggy, and you, I wasn't sure what I heard. And no matter what went through my head, I knew that there was that whatever happened was nobody but two people in that house ending up with three people dead. I, there wasn't a doubt in my mind. Sitting rings. The blood splatter noted on his left index finger showed no signs of injury either. So this is strange. It said in the police report, remember, I'll put a screenshot here, that the blood that was on his finger was also gone when it got to the crime lab. So the day of the actual, the, the Sunday when we were airing certain, th well, I heard that he hadn't come to work. I asked my wife to go around t to his house to check because that just didn't sa sound right to me. Now, I've got to live with this on my conscience, right? And it, it wasn't, uh, it's not a nice thing to think about because goodness gracious, what she could have walked in on.
And she just, I called her and said, look, can you find out where Chris lives? She said, well, first of all, I don't know where he lives because he, he hasn't told us. Secondly, no, I'm not going around his house because I don't like him. Okay. So that was the end of that. But McMahon just doesn't buy that concussions drove his former champion to kill. Hey, this is with Chair's Farm Dispatch. Yes, sir. How are you? I'm doing good. Did you get my message or did you just... Uh, no, no. I just called the number back. Okay. Very good. Um, I do have a couple of de a couple of deputies out at Mr. Benoit's house. Okay. But the gate is locked and they're unable to get inside. <phone rings> Mr. Fagan? Yes, sir. Okay. Were you able to get a gate code or anything like that? Uh, no, no. But what happened was uh, they, they just called back. They said that there's only one neighbor to the left right there who is very friendly with them you know, right. yeah, the main thing right. now that right. that neighbor that's friendly with him do you think they would be able possibly to contain those dogs uh hey county 911 what is your emergency did you guys hear that it dialed out and then it rang and the 911 dispatcher picked up and before the 911 dispatcher picked up you can hear because this is holly mcfake trap for chris benoit's neighbor you could hear holly breathing heavy <sighs> and then the 911 dispatcher picks up pretty much and holly explains all, what all happened but why did it record it from her end it's like she recorded it. We certainly were aware or have been made aware of some issues that he was having from some neighbors. Tell me about the diary. Uh, well, the diary, uh, we found the diary after the fact. It was actually a, a neighbor uh, of theirs that retrieved it from the trash. There is one other thing that I want to say. There is a nonsense rumor going around and was even, I believe, written in a book that Dave Taylor was at the house that day. Mm -hmm. That is absolute nonsense. And if you ever need proof of that, Dave Taylor was in Texas. I'm not gonna get into Dave's side of the story. Dave Taylor was in Texas. He has his, and he still has his flight receipts because he got them. And he also has his hotel receipt. And I will tell you how it may have, whoever was reporting on this may have thought that Dave wasn't there and then made up this nonsense of, of story that Dave was at the house, at Chris's house. Some addictions. He <laughs> was the next one to be dead. Yeah. Oh, how he did not die, I do not know. I've put him to bed and dragged him out of places that many times, you wouldn't believe it. Un 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 unbelievable. And he knows it himself, you know what I mean? He knows, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm surprised. I'm surprised he lived through it. I am really, really surprised. That is what happened. That is why I seem a, a little, 
suspect on that um, piece of footage that you can see is because I've just heard that and it is going around my head thinking, well, I'd better cover myself. Um, we're around through my formative years, mm -hmm. like like my ex brother in law, like Kevin Sullivan and Mark Lewin, uh, who's the Purple Haze years and years ago. Yeah. Um, I'm showing my age, but <laughs> and um, then after that, it was Rocco and Johnny Grunge, which that was Mike thing? Durham, yeah. you know, and Mike Durham actually was my sister and Chris's neighbor in Peachtree City for years, and my sister and Chris were um, godparents to his son. There's about a, a half an acre from the gate to the front house, and it was just inundated with news crews, just mm. absolutely inundated. In fact, I crawled, I crawled through a small hole in her our neighbor's her neighbor's fence. Holly, um, she's the one that actually found them. Mm. I'm sick of you ducking me, Undertaker. You know I'm the most dominant superstar in SmackDown, and you know you can't prove me wrong. You think I'm afraid of you, little man? I can't count the number of superstars who have tested themselves against the dead man and come up short. If you insist on making this mistake, then your grieving family will have no one to blame but you when the inevitable occurs. No I, I think that they came in on them. This is my th just from what I see. Uh, I think they came in on them in the wee hours of the morning, and I think he was bound and tied and watched his wife tortured. And then I think they made him look at her dead body for a day, and then put her in, and then they did it to his son, and then they tortured him. That's, that's insane. He's, he's, lo weird. he's lost his mind at right, this point. Right. Right. That's like that's not. There's he's, no justification yeah. for that. That is. That's, You're sitting in the house with your. Right. Dead family that yep. you murdered yep. for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. And and for all reasoning and from reports that we had from the office, like when I called the, op the, the office, the WWE, WB, yeah. when I spoke at the office with Jen, she's like, you know, he, he called. He was like trying to make a flight. Like he, and she, she just kept, you know, stuttering, like yeah, yeah, trying yeah. to wrap her like, what the hell was he doing? Like, right, you know, right. kind of like. And, and he was trying to change his fight and get to the match. Like, would he think that no one knew that he did? It was just, you could kind of see where his logic was skipping in mm -hmm. and out of reality. Right. You know, yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. just um, I think that his default mode, as we alluded to before, was to focus on work, focus on getting, you know, getting the job and mm -hmm. default to what he knew to do. Go to the airport, go to work, Russell, come home, take shit. I've always hypothesized sometimes with Paul and sometimes after a couple of cocktails, yeah. but always, you know, thought, I think that he thought that the business was, was choking him, was killing him. I mm -hmm. think that he thought that everything about it, that the fame that ended up coming after winning, um, WrestleMania, I think that the, the devastation of losing friends in the business to, you know, let's face it, 
some medical conditions that could have been avoided um, yeah. if they were truck drivers or yeah, right. bus drivers or you right. know plumbers. Mm -hmm. um, but it is what everyone signs up for. So I've never, I've never, you know, gone gone hard on that issue. I know what it is, but I just thought that how strangely and grotesquely poetic that it was that he did that. That he killed himself by breaking his neck, which he had already done once in the ring. So it just there had to be some thought process to that, which has always kind of eaten away at mm -hmm. me a little bit. There had to be some kind of thought process to that, that he ended up going out that way after what he had done upstairs. I mean, it took time. All of what he did took time, you know? And it's not like you're just putting a gun in your mouth and going, <laughs> right. Like you're actually would have to, like you said, construct an apparatus, you know, to figure out how to do this. Yeah. I mean, he researched it. Like, he researched it. It's just really, you know, because obviously the police took the computer and, you know, we were involved with the detectives the whole time. I mean, it was in his search history. That's just, like, also that's something that's kind of not yeah. Chris because he wasn't. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. He wasn't, he wasn't a computer doing, guy. No, yeah. he wasn't. And no. it was just all, all of it was just super, super weird. And then to have an odd religious aspect to it of putting my sister's Bible next to her and a Bible next to Daniel of, you know, what did you think that that was going to do for them? Or maybe did you think it was going to absolve you? Because they weren't a religious people. <laughs> yeah. I mean. Okay, and he's a, a wrestler? Yes, he's, what, what happened, he's a religious gentleman. And Now, do you think it's possible that the case of Chris Benoit, where he murdered his wife and small child, could have been uh, demonic related? The truth of the matter here is that Nancy, whether it was a gimmick or not, was with Kevin Sullivan in that devil worship gimmick. And Hannibal, we have to be very, very careful when we cross into these areas. I'm telling you right now, we have to be very careful. Because even though it may be an act, the devil can still come in through that, even though it's an act and there's no real intent to summon or anything like that. The devil could still use that as a legal right and God will allow it because of free will. So perhaps without really knowing the answer, perhaps there was something there that may have been attached to her through that type of thing. And then uh, definitely looking at videos and photos of Chris Benoit, I would have to say that I do feel that he had something spiritually going on very wrong in his life. In 2007, it was announced that Chris Benoit had taken his life, as well as his wife and his son. However, what is lesser known is that 14 hours before the bodies of the Benoit family were discovered, an anonymous editor had edited Benoit's Wikipedia page to write that his wife had died. The user's IP address that linked to Stanford, Connecticut claims that he heard word of Chris Benoit no-showing WWE fence due to a family emergency and heard rumours that it may be due to his wife's death. He claimed that he did the wrong thing by editing the wiki page and that it was all a coincidence. It's certainly creepy to think about knowing what we know now. Even if it was simply just a coincidence that he wrote up for death of Benoit's wife, it's still creepy to think about what happened and knowing that someone's rumour, what was wrote online, was fully uncovered before the truth was even apparent. About, about this whole situation is we just don't know. I mean, we don't know... We don't know, and we never will know. No. Yeah. You know, like I was even saying, like this, I mean, it could be freaking demonic possession for all we know. There's like, there's no, there's no answer. Right. You know what that I mean? Is
And I think it's lazy reporting and lazy investigation that a lot of people are just tying this up in a nice steroid bow and putting it in the corner and moving along and just saying that's the case. I did some research. If you are a massive caffeine user and abuser, it can lead to hallucinations, depression, anxiety, violent behavior, and sometimes psychotic behavior. Now, if I came on here and said caffeine caused this, you would think I was a lunatic. If I take out caffeine and put in steroids with the exact same list of, of, of symptoms, you'd say, bingo, that's it. Um, I call him, no answer. Then all of a sudden, I get a, a call from him. And he's like, oh, call right back. Hey, Chavo, hey, what's up, man? He sounds just off. I'm like, man, you okay? He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm cool, man. Just, just really bad, a really, really just bad weekend. I just, you know, Daniel and Nancy are sick, his wife, you know, and, you know. Uh, so you're actually talking to him at this point. I'm talking time. to him, yeah. And he's and this and, is basically after he's probably killed his wife. Uh, yes. Yeah. He gets off the, he, getting ready to get off the phone, and, and he goes, he makes a point of it. It stops. He goes, chavo, chavo. I go, yeah. And he goes, I love you. I said, I love you too, man. Wasn't too auto, you know off off kilter because mm -hmm. we always tell each other we love each other. Yeah. But this one was really forced. It was not. It was not forced. It was really like made a point of it. It was like, hey man, okay, I love you, brother. Okay, no, it was like, Chavo, I love you. I want you to understand this. Basically, mm -hmm. if you don't forget this, coming from a man with very few words. Yeah, yeah. I was like, all right, I love you too, bro. So I hung up, and I thought that was strange. So I called him right back, and I go. Hey man, are you are you all right? I'm fine, man. Like I said, I just had a a real hard weekend, you know, and and, and just you know, you know, real hard weekend, and the, the, you know, I had to go to the, take him, you know, Nad, Daniel and Nancy to the hospital, and I'm like, oh, okay, man. Well, I'm here. Okay, okay, man. Okay, cool, cool. Probably 5 a.m. and I get a text from Chris. So and you then, wake up in the morning. You've got these not texts. even before. I woke me up before okay, at five in the morning. Mm -hmm. So I look and I look at the uh, my text, and I'm like, that's weird. It says the dogs are in the enclosed pool area the garage door is open then i get another text from nancy's phone from his wife's phone and it said the same thing you know the same text that's really weird okay whatever uh, i kind of wrote it off so then got to get up in two hours so i got up i look at um i go downstairs to meet uh, scotty armstrong and uh i look at him i go did you get some weird Anything weird last night happened? And he goes, yeah, I got some weird texts from, from Chris. Didn't tell us anything about the text, nothing. Did that, you feel something was going on weird something, at this point? Something was going on. Something was going on. And I remember Arn Anderson saying, this is later on in the day, because he was supposed to wrestle the pay-per-view. He was for, supposed to wrestle for the title. For, yeah, the, the ECW championship against CM Punk. He was supposed to wrestle for him. Wrestle him. And this is a big match. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember Arn Anderson saying, you know what? If Benoit didn't show up with no word, he's either has just taken off to like Alaska mm -hmm. is going to be like a, you know, a merchant Marine or something or he's, or he's dead basically. They also never recovered Chris Benoit's cell phone. They have absolutely no idea where it is. The police also conveniently cut the line immediately. Also, the needles and steroids they said that Chris pumped into his body right before the murders were never found in his house either. The medical examiner said because of the decomposition of Chris's body, he died Saturday, but he was supposedly sending text messages on Sunday. There also were 10 empty beer cans and one empty wine bottle sitting by Chris's body, but not a trace of alcohol found in his system. Police also changed how Daniel died three different times. They also changed where they found Nancy's body three different times. Tell me what's your thought? I know you're a very deep thinker. I, I, I think he got involved with someone and he didn't know who he was involved with. And I think that they put a hit on him over a three-day period. They would try to get him to do something. He wouldn't, he wouldn't go for it. And they, and, 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 and they murdered his, his family and had him to watch. You mentioned uh, earlier about uh, the last year and a half. Did you start noticing? Because I, I noticed, started noticing stuff too. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to call Chris. I still do. He, uh, we called him Houdini because he would just, I don't, he would just disappear. Mm -hmm. Like he would, you never would know when he was leaving. If everyone was having some drinks at a bar or whatever, yep. even in the arena, he would just like poof, he's gone. Mm -hmm. And then I also call him the Loch Ness monster because he would surface and like call you on the phone and if you missed that call if he went back under even three seconds later you wouldn't hear from him from like another month yep and that started really getting 
more and more regular where it's like, you know, hey, dude, like, you know, and I just you could start like looking back now, you could see that there's some stuff like that going on more and more frequently. Yes. Did you notice that and have the experiences with that as well? Definitely. There were um, way, way more instances of that. That's a great charm, Loch Ness Monster, because mm-hmm. that's very, very true. You, I get a random text or a random call and, and then I call my sister and be like, hey, I just heard from Chris and wherever Minneapolis, you know, is every, was everything okay at the match? She's like, oh, he's probably, you know, had a drink, just wants to chat mm-hmm. with you and hear something funny or something. And I'm like, well, I missed, tried to call back. You know, she's like, oh, yeah, he's gone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay. But what really became noticeable was a little bit more of like a, a, a sense of unsafeness and and paranoia for the family like he just would like constantly be checking the alarm at night constantly be checking things and for himself like when we would go to the gym and do things like that he would take different ways every time like different routes yeah to the gym. different routes the same gym you know all the time and around the same time every day sometimes twice a day because you know mm-hmm. and um you know, the way we would go in the morning is not the way that we would go after dinner and, you know, we'd take the Hummer one day, but then I had a Mustang at the time. He's like, Let, let's take the Mustang instead. And and never, ever, ever before I had that been. He he was used to be, you know, fairly laid back about mm-hmm. stuff like that. It was never, there wasn't ever any issue like that. So when it did start happening, it was something I noticed immediately. Mm-hmm. Like, what is the deal with this? What, you know, what is going on? And he seem to have a little bit more short patience with things um you know just that not having it sensibility like it's just you know over over certain things like you mm-hmm. know couldn't like it going into Publix and getting food and stuff he just he didn't want to do that anymore he wanted you know he'd tell me what he wanted and send me or or if nance and i were out during the day just call and say pick this up it was a huge personality change not crazy huge where everyone else would notice but people around him a lot would would notice and I didn't really understand what was happening and and to be frank I still kind of look back on it and like you know what was what was that and mm-hmm. was it a precursor to everything that happened I don't know and it's sad it's sad that they they had very they had very uh, slowly taken themselves out of that group and start to really be private, even to that group that we used to hang out with. Uh, they moved to a different house. None of us knew that. He, he had put up big gates. None of us knew that. In 2005, World Wrestling Entertainment's Chris Benoit mourned the loss of his best friend and fellow wrestler, Eddie Guerrero. He all of a sudden was a lost man. He, he, was, he didn't have his moral compass. He didn't have that person to talk to, his sounding board. Chris's wife, Nancy, suggested he keep a journal to help him through his rough time. He was quoting scripture in, in a lot of his writings. Chris was not a, a religious guy. He writes in, in one, he t- he's telling Eddie Guerrero about a dream that he had. And the dream was that um, his mom and dad were dead, uh, had been killed, and that was myself and my wife. Uh, and that him and Nancy were trying desperately to get to Daytona Beach to save her mother and father that there were very powerful people after them and then when they got to daytona beach nancy's mom and dad had perished too and they were running for their life chris and nancy and what these powerful people wanted to do was uh take his bible away from him and then at the end of this this story he says that this is a dream but on the end of this story he goes on to say that, Eddie, I'm sure that there's a message in here, but I'm not sure what that message is. Put nightmarish stuff on him. He was in the mental ward, or his therapist saying he's not crazy that Queen Elizabeth tortures his soul in another dimension and there are demons there. For real, he got very religious not knowing he was a clone. Elizabeth had caged his soul. Almost sounds like what Tila Tequila said. He was one of Elizabeth's favorite slaves there but he would disobey and insult and she made an example out of him bad like Bernie Mac but more prolonged and involving his immediate family and friends. He had to bang pick dog Elizabeth regularly. Didn't even know he was a clone, they told him it was another dimension like they told Tila. 
He eventually said nope no more. She gutted him badly, repeatedly. Got his wife and kid too but they were memory suppressed. Tortured them in front of him, I saw, was terrible. They got really sick, didn't even know why. They tore em bad. Even Benoit, who once wore the championship belt, had he not killed his family, his suicide alone might have gone virtually unnoticed. But that spectacular crime has now gotten the attention of Congress. Is, uh, Dr. Ashton Crispin was friend and personal physician. A federal grand jury has indicted Dr. Ashton on seven counts of overprescribing painkillers and other drugs. I understand, Manny, that the painkillers and overprescriptions on the indictment do not involve Benoit. Is that correct? That's correct. They involve two patients, one that was seen five times between 2004 and 2005, and one patient that was seen twice in 2005. That's the entire so, indictment. Why was the story then connecting Ashton and Benoit since the indictment doesn't connect it? Well, it's based on all the press releases the government has done. The first thing I need your viewers to understand is when they did the initial search of his house back on the 27th of June. And at first, all the heat was on steroids. Cops confiscated all of them steroids. Think about that. Operation Raw Deal on Monday at 6 o'clock Eastern Time. 7 o'clock. I saw this on the news. It was on there and there long. It's on sports sets. ESPN, a little bit on the news and all that. And it kind of died out. And, and, and they busted 27 states of labs, steroid labs, six countries, one in China, confiscated every bit of them steroids. They got the steroids. Do you follow me? They got it off the street. That's how they did it. He took the fall. He um, you know, I keep hearing all this stuff about steroids, and, you know, I'm just, uh, my position is more like I just want someone to really prove it and make it narrow it down to that. And if it's going to be, if you're going to pin this on steroids, then then you've got to have some factual, you know, some real facts. There's no knowledge, John, is there of either growth hormone or steroids causing someone, I'm maybe wrong here, to be violent? Absolutely not. There's no proven knowledge, and I think that's why uh, Brett speaks so intelligent, intelligently when he asks someone to prove it. I mean, this, this, this was a tragedy. This was an unexplainable tragedy that lasted for nearly two and a half days. I don't, I don't see an out-of-control rage being responsible for that, but then again, I don't think we'll ever find out what exactly caused this. I, I really, I take great offense to not only people of the media pointing to this as being a, a case of roid rage when there hasn't been any proof. Listen, it was an 18 month investigation of Operation Raw Deal, all right? It was two months after Benoit was dead that this bus come through. The cops have a pet, the, the, any leading legal, uh, uh, a sting investigation, anything like that. It's a pet thing when they name it. It was named Raw Deal 18 months. Do you understand what I'm saying? As soon as they started, way before he ever got killed. Does that make sense? You, you, I know that from working there. I know how that is. But that's a big deal, just to name it. Sure, they use wrestling. Raw Deal comes out on Monday. It's not a coincidence. You get me? Does that make sense what I'm saying? 18 months. So 16 months before this man, this whole thing happened to him and his family, that was already conducting this investigation on the steroids. You follow? And there was another wrestling death. There were two wrestling deaths right before Nancy and Chris. What was your theory on, uh, on what happened with the killings? Well, I like to talk about one thing that nobody talks about. There was another, there was another body found that day. Another wrestler died that day that nobody talks about. He was kin to Chris. His name was um, Biff Wellington. Oh, from Stampede Wrestling. Stampede Wrestling. That was Chris Benoit's former tag team partner. And they did tours together in Japan. He was found the same day that Chris was found dead. Prosecutor in Albany, New York, found 10 current wrestlers on the customer list of an internet pharmacy accused of dealing illegal steroids. So we took action immediately, the same day. They weren't actually caught by the WWE's drug policy, they were caught by some local prosecutor. Sure. If it was roid rage, why would there be a space of time between the death well, of the wife and the son and yourself? It's like they wanted to ruin his reputation, his reputation, the wrestling business too, of course, but I don't know if it's so much that, but, but they want to control the steroid trade. Somebody did. 
Well, they confiscated all that. Then they got the doctor. Then they did the signature farming bus. Other bus they did. Well, um, Mike Brooks, CNN law enforcement analyst, former D.C. police officer, everybody's up in arms because the DEA apparently knew that Benoit was buying steroids for quite a while. <clears throat> well, I'd like the opportunity to comment on the amounts that they said the doctor was given Benoit. They said he was giving him a 10-month supply every three weeks. Is that correct? And, well, my question would be is I would want to see the toxicology reports to see if it substantiates the amounts that he was given, Benoit, and if he was actually taking those amounts before he jumped the gun here. Because, well, for all we know, he was giving some of them away. Do you know, what do you, what do you make of the raid on the doctor's office? Um, well, I don't know. It sounds to me like this doctor was, um quite friendly with Chris and his whole family and may have been involved in uh, in uh, ad administering uh, drugs to in, for various reasons to, to all three of them. Is steroid use a problem? Has it been in wrestling? Um, it, it, I believe it, it, it has been a problem but I don't I didn't think it was a problem uh, I really, it's my understanding that the, the drug, drug policy that they put in place after Eddie Guerrero died was, has been really legitimate and really, uh, you know, they've been really conscientious of making it uh, on the level and everyone's been tested. He did have some kind of brain injury, to get back to that point. I would think from a business standpoint, Mr. McMahon, you would be concerned about that. Do you speak with uh, Chris Nowitzki? No. Were you speaking with him? I know he took money from WWE. For what? To, to not say it was CTE? Uh, I'm not sure, but I know he took money from them, so. I mean, he was the one who studied your yeah. dad's brain, right? Yep. There's been so many wrestlers, James. Let me, this is another exclusive that nobody talks about because nobody knows about it. Remember that lawsuit a few years ago against the WWF? Hmm. Do you realize that close to 50% of the people around that lawsuit are now deceased? Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. Crazy. Do you know that a lot of those guys have gotten tested? post-mortem for CTE, you mm -hmm. don't hear about it, right? It wasn't by Chris Nowinski. Why? Because Chris Nowinski is bought and paid for by the WWE to not test the brains. Of the show itself, um, you said how eerie it was. Do you remember who delivered the news to you guys? And they, they went about doing testimonials. Were, were you asked to do a testimonial? How did that all go? Um, Vince, Vince and family, Vince and the, the top office came out and they broke the news to us. They, uh, you know, told everyone about it and you know, what, what their intention was to do for the show. Uh, yeah, I, I was asked to do a testimonial, but I, I said, I, I'm okay. And I declined to do it because as the day was going on, as you know, more info started coming out and, you know, they weren't really sure about how his family died. And there were just some guys who were suspicious that, you know, this, it could be foul play, you know. So, like, I, I was one of those guys who declined to speak just, just to be safe. I mean, hey, Parker, this has been long time. It's about uh, five to two in the afternoon. Um, so, unfortunately, man, find out what happened. Uh, I heard I was talking to one of the production crews, uh, crew guys on the uh, flight home into Atlanta. He said you, you kind of got shafted over, and that really fucking sucks. Um, but, you know, if there's anything I can do at all, man, please give me a call and let me know. And, um, you know, fuck, man, you know, nothing, ex nothing changes the experience. Like, nothing could be better than experience when you got that. It's like, uh, I don't know, I, you know, I'm just talking about, I'm talking shit right now. I don't know what, what the details are, are off the top of my head, but, I hope as well with you, man, and uh, just missed you the last couple of weeks. I wonder where you're at. I hope you're doing well. Uh, if you can, when you get the chance, give me a call. Take care, man. I hope as well. Bye. Um, but, you know, um, but, um, but, you know. So you clearly hear something being drugged 
across the floor. And based on what I'm hearing, it cannot be Chris that's dragging this thing across the floor because he's on the phone talking. And if you're pulling something that heavy, you would be able to tell it in his voice. But, you know, but, you know, but, you know, if there's anything I can do at all, man. They destroyed him. The Chris Benoit song is all about how they dismantled him mentally. Chris thought it was fifth dimension. Didn't know he was a clone. I will avenge Chris Benoit's death. Can ya tell who I'm supposed to be in the vid? Honorary clown. Forced to make songs for the losers back in the day. Chris Benoit was one of the nicest people that I ever met there. He didn't want to have sex with Elizabeth and he stole a satanic cloner's wife and had a kid. That was all they needed to run a program of hell on him every night. Tortured his wife and kid there as clones in front of him. They were memory suppressed though. All they knew was they were getting bedridden sick. Benoit knew why they were so sick they were being clone tortured nightly. They made an example of him. The idiots think I'm magic cause of all the songs. The crest on his school uniform is Chechequatl a Mayan god. Reference to viril lizards. They all do steroids, almost all. You have no idea how evil that Chris Benoit song is. That insane clown posse sings. His death song, I hated making that song but tried to add hints in it for these days when I could clear his good name and avenge his death. They drove him insane. He was strong-willed. Now they're going to do it to me. They change one line in it. It says clap up and stab two. Sad news. Originally it was crab nasty stab two. Sad news. Crab nasties is what I called the viral type ones when I was a kid. I still call the disgusting things crab nasties. That is a very evil song. Being released unhurt was a reward for successfully making a song, or a few. They used to have viral type one swarm Chris Benoit and dart him with the mouth spikes. And put the neurotoxic spit in him, it's agonizing, they do it to me. Watch that video, Illuminati paid and made. The insane clown had a part in the death of Chris Benoit. Elizabeth systematically destroyed him. And the clowns helped as much as they could. The fat clown Violent J I guess hated Benoit with the passion cause at the cloning center he was talking to Chris in front of all the celebrities, and conversation came around to the clown saying well, I'm a wrestler athlete like you. Chris Benoit worked very hard to get the body he had, and the wrestling techniques. Chris soured his face up and said, you're not a wrestler. Clown was embarrassed. Chris said, you're a fat slob, your parents bought you into it, I had to work hard. The clown cried. Chris wrestled him in the dirt of the cloning center a little bit, made a fool of him, clown couldn't do anything. After that he ran afoul of Elizabeth and stole a cloner's wife and had a kid with her.
Right. Yeah, it is like who's a like it's some Chris Ben Washington probably would set him off. He wasn't like, in there though. And, and, I know, but I'm saying that's probably what gave him that like holy shit, these some of these motherfuckers are crazy. Right, but at the end of the thing he says, people want to know why Chris Ben Washington isn't in my top ten. He and it's it. because he was crazy. He yeah. said he don't believe he was evil. Yeah, he, he was thinks crazy. he went crazy well, I, somehow yeah. flipped. You know, it doesn't necessarily qualify him as evil. You know, I don't think I'm not a psychiatrist and all of that, but I think that in order to be evil, you gotta have something mentally wrong with you. You know what I'm saying? But no, no, uh, yeah. what do I know though? I know But there are motherfuckers that are just evil. Yeah. Like hey, they know you that do. you know they're smart you about your hiding it, and that whatnot, they killed yeah. somebody and shit. Oh, like And um another cool thing about the video was um the Dika brothers did not want the, the, the subliminal style flashes of Chris Benoit in the video. But me and Shaggy wanted that shit in there bad. So um, we demanded it. Very strange. And I'll never forget that day where they called a talent meeting of all the talent. They wanted everybody to get together. And keep in mind, we've been walking around all day long. There's all these, there's caskets in several different places. Different shots are going to do about Vince. There's all these wreaths everywhere. There's flowers everywhere. Just like, you know, it, like it really is a, a funeral home. There were so many weird, eerie vibes, you know, floating around that day as we're going to be, you know, doing the show that followed Vince's explosion, you know, and supposed death of the boss. Um, and it was a very sad day, obviously, extremely sad and, just remarkably eerie in every way possible because of the, what we were there to do that day with the, the Vince storyline. Uh, what, what was the office's reaction? Did they tell you, don't speak about this in public? I mean, were there any rules when it came to Chris moving forward? See, without getting too conspiracy-ish, um, I read this book. I don't know the the true validity of it but i had read a book that alluded to the the office knowing about what had happened when it happened apparently there are phone records of someone in stanford being on the phone with chris after the first accident with nancy but before he I guess took his son's life, you know. Um, I guess what I'm saying is the office, from what I believe and feel, knew more about what they led on to. Nothing from the WWE under any set of circumstances had anything at all to do with Chris Benoit murdering his family. How did we know that Chris Benoit would turn into a monster? And I don't think I don't think that the police were really really looked into it as much as they did. And the reason I, I believe that they didn't look into it as much as they did because they were more concerned about protecting uh, McMahon company more so the, than they were in investigating the case. Well said. Brett, Let's check in with uh, also at the CNN Center in Atlanta with Scott Ballard, the Fayette County District Attorney. What's the latest on the investigation, Scott? Well, the investigators continue to study all the leads. Uh, everything that we look at still, we come back with the same conclusion that this was a murder-suicide. Um, we're waiting on the toxicology results to come back, and only then will we know what was in these bodies and, and be able to make any judgments about any impact of steroids or any other substances on the act. Do you expect, Scott, we, we will ever have full, full closure of this? I doubt it. And then Vince tells us all what happened. Like what, you know, uh, someone broke, as far as, as far as he knew, someone broke into the Benoit house, killed his wife, his son, and Chris. Do you ever hear Vince say anything after, um, after it, it all comes out that Chris did this? No, like that's a crazy thing. It went from like being, we had a meeting about it, about what happened mm -hmm. and then never talked about it again. 
they didn't want any kind of ties to it, obviously, right? They spent like over a million dollars just to erase this legend out of the history books, to change all their media, everything. Hi, Larry. I was just wondering how the panel felt about uh, the WWE pretty much acting as Chris Benoit never existed. Uh, I'm sorry, we're running up on time. I apologize. Thank you all very uh, I know that suicide is a crime, but it's a it's a non-punishable crime, right? Right. Find out. Talk to the DA. He says, I don't know if they're going to see a psychiatrist. I don't know if they're still holding the body. And on top of that, first and foremost, he'll never know exactly what caused this. Does the, your investigation lead you to talk to psychiatrists? Um, I don't know whether the sheriff's office has talked with psychiatrists or not. I mean, and as a district attorney, would you? Well, if we had somebody we had to try, then perhaps we'd need a, uh, some expert testimony. I doubt we'll talk to a psychiatrist without a defendant in the case. So uh, even the toxicology report is not going to give us a final conclusion. It's probably. not. After the toxicology report found steroids in Benoit's system, speculation began that roid rage might have been behind what happened that fateful weekend. There's no consensus in the medical community that this issue of roid rage, uncontrolled violence, precipitated by uh, seemingly normal life stressors, there's no consensus that that even exist. The changes that we see in the, his brain tissue are not caused by steroids. And then they said, SmackDown in San Antonio tomorrow is voluntary. And, I, and the, uh, that always stood out to me because I thought, you know, none of the info on the case had come out yet. No one had any idea what had happened, right? Um, so if we're doing a tribute show to our fallen comrade, why is it voluntary? instead of mandatory you know like when have you ever heard of a tv being voluntary you know like if you're under contract and so that was very odd i thought that was very odd and i wouldn't be surprised if the office did that just to squeeze one more date of ratings out of the whole situation knowing what had happened there's a lot of conspiracy theories out there about this someone killed him someone killed him you do think that why? There's too much evidence proving the evidence wrong, I feel. I do not believe for one iota that Chris Benoit killed his son and killed a woman. I don't believe that. I don't believe that at all. I believe that maybe Chris Benoit found them and because his son was dead and he, he done himself. All right, he didn't do it. Simple as that. You can look at a man's eyes and tell if he's a murderer, if he's got a he, uh, You know, and I knew Nancy wanted to do him from Kevin, you know. Kevin didn't have nothing to do with it. Vince didn't have nothing to do with it. Breaking cops or some major, somebody heavy. I'll just say that.